Hey booktube, it's Thea, and this is gonna be my February wrap up. So for February, I have a total of 13 things that I have read. So um, let's go ahead and dive right in. Two things that I read in February is Maximum Ride Volume 3 and Volume 4. This is the manga adaptation of the series by James Patterson. I really enjoy this manga series. It is just a fast-paced, quick read that follows um, Max as our main character and her kind of quote-unquote flock as they are human but something's not quite right. They've been experimented on and they all have wings and can fly. And the series is about discovering um, who they are, their background, where they come from. So it's kind of like this like YA kind of coming of age story, but it has fantasy sci-fi elements because they've been experimented on and there's science and they can fly. Um, it's a really fun, quick, fast paced, easy read. Um, I feel like these are good way to kind of introduce maybe some new younger audiences to manga. Um, but I I really enjoyed it. I gave this vol, I gave both of these volumes five stars. The next thing that I read in February was Paper Girls Volume 3 by Brian K. Vaughn. This is the next volume in the um, graphic novel series that does kind of have a YA sci-fi kind of feel. It definitely has like Stranger Things feels. Um, I really enjoy this series. This just continues on with the Paper Girl gang and traveling through time. Um, I, um, this, this, it does kind of feel like it's been the weakest volume of ones I've read so far, so I ended up giving this three stars. The next thing that I picked up is Moonstruck Volume 1. This was a YA middle grade-ish uh, fantasy graphic novel series as well. Honestly, it was kind of forgettable. Um, I don't really remember much about it. I remembered it was, I felt like it was all right. Um, I know I wasn't the entire like targeted audience because it does have a very younger feel, but I tend to really like middle grade novels. I don't know. I just felt like this was um, just all right. There it had, there was just something missing from the volume. I don't know if maybe it gets better in volume two. This is just a middle grade fantasy series that takes place in this world where humans and fantasy characters kind of live together. And I felt like it was just okay. I'm interested to see the second volume if it gets better. Um, but for me, this volume was just okay. And I gave it three stars. Then picked up the assassination of the assassination of Brang Wayne Spurge. I don't really know where I found out about this. I think maybe Reagan um, had hauled it in a haul a while ago and I happened to come across it in my library and I was kind of feeling slumpy. I was hoping that this would get me out of my slump. This was just another one that I felt was just okay. I gave it three stars. It's this like kind of quirky, kooky, um, between like middle grade and, and young adult um, standalone novel that follows two different perspectives. One of them is an elf and one of them is a troll. And um, they do, it is uh, multimedia as well. One of the stories takes place in um, like pictures and drawings and the other story does like based in text. It reminded me of like Brian Selznick where two different plot, uh, two different storylines take place in two different formats. Um, it was, it was interesting. I'm not really sure how I felt about it. It was kind of forgettable, to be honest. Um, it's like 600 pages, but again, like half of the story is told in um, like drawings and uh, pictures. So it was a really fast paced read. I think I read it in a sitting, maybe a sitting and a half, um, but it was kind of forgettable. I honestly don't even really remember what it was about, um, but in the moment I felt like it was just okay. So this was another book that I gave three stars. Up Spider Gwen Radioactive Volume One Greater Power because after seeing Spider Verse, I was really intrigued into Spider Gwen as a character and wanted to give some of her standalone works a try. But this was another one that I just felt like was okay. Um, I ended up I ended up giving this three stars. I had some issues with the pacing timeline and the pacing. Um, I just I. <laughs> Uh, it's hard because I really, really like Spider Gwen as a character. I, th I think she's a very interesting character. I really enjoy what Marvel is doing with the movies, but in my opinion, Marvel, when it comes when it comes to graphic novels um, and the written text, Marvel just isn't as strong as DC. This is another one that I just felt like was okay. I gave it three stars. I am interested to see if the story um, picks up a little bit, if the 
plot gets a little bit better and the, the series continues to grow. Um, but for me, this story was just okay. I enjoy Spider Gwen as a character. I'm interested to see where she, um, I'm interested to see her as a character. But this one just had kind of some pacing issues and had some timeline issues. And so for me, it was just okay. I gave it three stars. After that, I picked up Umbrella Academy Volume 2 Dallas by Jared Way because the Netflix series is out and I wanted to finish out the series before I started the, the TV show. Um, honestly, guys, this was another one that I just was not in love with. I gave it three stars. Um, I think I enjoyed it a little bit more than the first one, but in my opinion, this was just not very good. It had plot issues. It had pacing issues. I enjoyed the concept of the Umbrella Academy. I enjoyed the characters. I think the characters could have been a lot more flushed out in this series, um, but I'm really, really enjoying the Netflix series, and I hate to say it, but I'm actually enjoying the series a lot more than I'm enjoying the, the graphic novel series. I just don't think that the writing was very strong. Um, I like the concept, like the characters, like the concept, like the characters. I just feel like there are, it's kind of weak writing, didn't really like the ending, um, and there were kind of some plot and pacing issues, so I gave this three stars. Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, and I had really high expectations for this. I don't know why. I was just so intrigued by the idea of it taking place in a matter of like 60 to 90 seconds, told in verse, in an elevator. It was just so intriguing to me. I've been wanting to read it for so long. Um, but then I picked it up. I read it in a sitting, so it's a very fast-paced read, um, and it being in verse. But I was very disappointed. It was very predictable. I predicted the outcome from, like, page one. Um, and I, I feel like I just, I don't know if I just had hyped it up so much or I was expecting more from it. Um, I don't, I'm not sure. But I didn't love it, didn't hate it. I gave it three stars because I liked the idea. I liked the concept of it taking place within a matter of 60 to 90 seconds. Um, but I felt that the writing was a little weak and it was very predictable. So I gave it three stars. I then picked up D and Angel Volume 1. Um, this is a kind of a, a weird little um, manga series that follows our main character, Jayeshki, who is a ordinary middle school student, except for one little thing that sets him apart. He has a genetic quote-unquote condition where whenever he starts longing for the girl of his dreams and he turns into this alter ego phantom thief called dark and uh, the only way to lift the curse is for that love to be returned um i felt this was okay i think it has potential uh, but i feel this for the first volume was a little weak i don't know if it's just because it is the first volume and the series gets better um, but I felt that this was a little weak. This was a manga series that my boyfriend read when he was younger and really enjoyed. I don't know if maybe his thoughts of how it would change if he read it now or, um, since he was, if his, I don't know if he would enjoy it as much as if he read it now or if his thoughts have changed, but I personally just didn't love it. I think that it's a cute concept. The art style is very adorable and I like the character. I think it has potential and so I gave it three stars. I would like to continue on with the series and give it another try, but from this first volume, it was just okay, um, and I ended up giving it three stars. We have finally made it to a four-star book for February, and that is Revival Volume 4, Escape to Wisconsin. This is a graphic novel series that I've talked about a couple other times in a few wrap-ups, but it's a kind of dark um, thriller suspense kind of series that follows this weird little this um that follows this rural little town where they have um, a phenomenon happen called revival day where all of a sudden family members and people who live in this town who have died have come back to life um and they aren't zombies but they are undead and basically most of them come back they just you know go on living their life with their family um most of them are non-violent some of them have become kind of violent and have gone crazy. Um, so they are kind of starting to look, figure out the difference between the two. Um, there is this kind of underlying, there's this weird kind of monster that inhabits the undead that makes them crazy. Um, and so basically it follows Dana, who is trying to def 
discover, you know, this mystery, why it happened, um, who that was causing it. You also are trying to figure out um, who murdered her sister, which isn't a spoiler because you learn that from volume one um, that her sister has come back and she didn't know her sister was dead to begin with. And so it kind of is a murder mystery as well. Really enjoy this. It is very dark, very graphic. Um, so trigger warning, it does, it does have some very graphic elements, but it is a great series. It definitely something I enjoy reading every time. Um, and this, I feel like has been the weakest volume so far. I did give it, I still gave it four stars, but this one, in my opinion, was the weakest, but still really enjoyed it, gave it four stars, and I cannot wait to see where the story goes. It is so intriguing, um, and so many things have happened, and so many different dark, it follows multi-perspectives, and so many different ways, so I'm really excited to see where the story continues. It's actually my first, like, full novel for February, and that's The Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson. This, I ended up giving three stars as well. I had a really hard time getting through this. It literally took me almost all month to read this, and this this isn't very big, um, but I really enjoyed it. The second, I really enjoyed the second half of the book. Um, I think the first and what why it took me so long was because the first part I just was not invested in the story in the first half of the book. It took so long to get going. It was very slow, in my opinion. It was very slow. Um, I am all about world building and character development, but this one was just there was just something about this one that I was not clicking with. Um, so the first half of the book really made it hard to get through. Uh, but then once I hit the second half of the book in part two, I breezed through this in like a day and a half. Um, but it took so long to get through part one that by the time I did enjoy it and invest, like by the time I got to where I was really enjoying it, I was just kind of sour about how I wasn't enjoying the first half. And I don't know if it was because I was slumpy in February. I don't know if it's just because it wasn't something that I enjoyed. But I've had this on my TBR for like three years. I have the entire series signed. I met Ray Carson. Um, and I had such high expectations for this. I would like to continue on with the series um, and read the rest to kind of see where the story goes. And I don't know if maybe... Part two was better in my opinion because it was the build up for the rest of the series, but I didn't enjoy this as much as I would have liked. I gave it three stars. I am intrigued to see the rest of the where the rest of the series goes, but um, this was another just okay book for me for February. And the second to last book that I read in February is Supergirl Volume 4 Plain Sight. This is the last book in the Supergirl uh, DC Rebirth. And this is another one that was just okay for me. Um, this whole Supergirl run, the whole DC Rebirth run of Supergirl has been okay. Um, I haven't, I just haven't really loved it. I, I really love a lot of the other DC Rebirth series, but this one is, I just feel like a weaker series in general. Um, I love Kara. I love Supergirl as a character, but this is, I just wasn't happy with the way it ended. I don't know if maybe they thought it was going to continue and then it didn't get picked up for more volumes because the ending's kind of weak um, and this just had kind of some pacing issues as well. So this volume got three stars. And the last book for February is Booked by Quam Alexander. This is an arc that I have no idea where it came from, but I've had it on my shelf for three years, I think. Um, and Quam Alexander was at my book festival in March. And so I wanted to pick up a book. I wanted to pick up this book and read it. And again, I was feeling so sloppy in February. I needed something that was quick and fast paced. This is, this is a middle grade novel that follows Nick, who is 12. He is a soccer player and it just follows his life learning to play soccer, being at school. It's a kind of coming of age story. Um, but this was enjoyable. I gave it three and a half stars. So it was a little bit better than some of the other books this month. Um, but I enjoyed it. I feel like it would be really great for a kid who really loves soccer. This would be really fun for them. Um, I enjoyed it. I think the writing is beautiful, uh, but just not a lot happens. And I wasn't a huge fan of the story in general. Um, so I ended up giving it three and a half stars. So here's everything that I read in February. It was a rough month, you guys. I feel like this is probably the worst reading month in a really long time. Not that I like really hated anything. It was just 
they were all kind of just okay. Nothing really stood out as amazing. Nothing was a new favorite read or a five star read. Um, it was just an okay month, but um, hopefully March is better. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys read in February. If you had a much better reading month than I did. If you've read any of these, any thoughts, comments, and opinions about them. As always, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe if not already. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy reading, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.